Unique me is uniquely you. Balancing the different hats of life, achieving all your goals in the name of Christ. Unique me is uniquely you. You can do anything. With the S on your chest, you can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. You are a winner. The journal line of Uniquely Me, or should I say GDP Publishing. As you know, guys, there are I'm multifaceted. There is the God's Daily Portion, Uniquely Me, and of course, there's GDP Publishing. Let me know, of course, guys, have you gotten any of these journals? How have you been finding them? Are they helpful to you? Have you been able to schedule yourself, um, your, your day um, or your year? 2022 is upon us and so you don't want to get caught um, without having your planner on hand. So that's it for me guys. Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Uniquely Me with Simone Stewart. Thank you so much for tuning in each week and taking in the stories of our women who are so resilient and strong. I call them unique women, but they're really super women, <laughs> no doubt. So guys, I'm um, just checking in. Have you gotten a copy of Uniquely Me? That's the book for which this program is indeed um, built off of. You can get your copy on Amazon. And of course, tune into our YouTube channel at Uniquely Me with Simone Stewart just to see what's really happening behind the scenes. But anyway, guys, you know I want to get into it. On set today, I have a very good friend of mine. Lord, we go so far back. I don't even want to call it so much so an interview today. I think I want to call it more of a... We're just going to sit and lime and talk a little bit about the word. I'm talking about Yvette Baugh. Hi, Yvette. Hi. <laughs> Yvette, you know, as I thought about our interview... I kept, I kept, you know, thinking that I really want a kind of relaxed setting, almost as if we're sitting on the beach. <laughs> but of course, we want to dig in a little bit first, you know. Because, you know, person want to know who is mm -hmm. it, you know, because my show always bring these women with all kinds of experiences, you know, women who have been through trauma yeah, and stuff, so and have overcome, but who is Yvette? Okay, so um, you like to know about my job, my profession, Anything whatever. At all you want to tell us about you. Okay, I've been a teacher for so many years. I've also been a counselor for over twenty years, wow. and um, I went to Bible school. We were both at Bible school together. Oh, trade course. minister. <laughs> I also teach Sunday school class. I've done Bible study and I've also shared the word on different occasions. You know what I love about you, Yvette? I love the word. You're a woman of the word and one other thing, and I'm sure those who are watching um, can really attest to the fact that once you come across Yvette, it's just word, 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 and it doesn't stop and it's just beautiful. So no doubt a Bible scholar. And guys, we were in the same Bible school, those from Jamaica Bible, Open Bible Institute. <laughs> All right, so Yvette, um, life life growing up what, what what was what were your thoughts what did you want to become growing up okay um the fact that i have written a book yes. and i've said that to my students at school i'm always sharing with them always passing on because i believe that you know the bible tells us that we should mentor those you know who come after us so i'm always sharing with them parts of my life some i will not say on the program because <laughs> I say to my students, but definitely not to not to Jamaica and the world. So there are things I won't share. But um, the my writing a book in high school, you know, before you left high school, everybody sharing what they want to do with their lives and so on. And uh, my dream and my goals, as I told my high school race at the time, is that one, I wanted to be a lecturer at a college. Mm -hmm. At the time, the only college we had in Jamaica was College of Art, Science and Technology cast. Mm -hmm. So that was one of my aspirations. The other, I told him I wanted to be an author. I wanted to write. Wow. So in high school, that was a dream I had. Yes. And I wrote them down. Mm -hmm. And uh, as each was achieved, I would tick them off. So when I ended up at a college, I said, wow, thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. I am now a lecturer at a college. Maybe not at the one I wanted, <laughs> but at a college. Mm -hmm. 
And so I've always had this dream. I want to write, want to write, but to get yourself settled down and write. So it's when you had your writer's workshop and I went and, you know, you inspired me. And I said, all right, let me try. But the funny part of it is that in writing, I started out writing my life story. And somehow, I don't know. I had to say, Lord, where are you taking me? I found myself going in a totally different direction mm -hmm. from where I was going with the book. Yes. And I found myself, when I prayed, I said, Lord, what should I say? It came to me about this name so and writing about this teenager. So I said, okay. And I started writing. And the thoughts were just flowing. I've always been a descriptive writer. Yes. So, you know, so and I believe in writing, I should write so that the reader can actually feel, yes. you know, right in the scene and so on so i love to write like that so i started out writing about this young girl but Anne, as i wrote in the book she is really an example of all the ants that we have yes, yes. and as i said in the book also i did not want to focus on the abuse because as a counselor you don't want to re-traumatize your client yes, yes. and so what i go after is more the feeling how are you coping with the feeling? Mm -hmm. So it's not about the abuse because it's, it's already gone. It's yes. already done. Yes. You can't change it and you cannot go back. Mm -hmm. But what I can do now is work with you now to find the strength in you yes. to cope yes. with what is happening. Mm -hmm. What do I do when um, I hear a song playing mm -hmm. or I hear a voice speaking, somebody speaking to somebody, mm -hmm. but the voice reminds me yeah. of this horrible experience. Mm -hmm. How do I cope with that so I, I don't break down every time? How do I cope over time with, you know, what has happened? And so the book, I try to focus more on coping. Yes. Because there are many books out there that write about the abuse and go into graphic details. Mm -hmm. I was not about the detail. Read a few, a few lines for us and then we dig a little more into it. Okay, um, I'm looking at the prologue. Anne Silveridge, aged 14 years, stopped and listened as she heard a heavy trot of footsteps coming up the stairs. She looked around and realized that the house was silent, with the exception of the footsteps she was alone. She panicked, and with her heart thudding, she tried to think of finding a safe place where she could hide. The threat of danger was real as the footsteps got closer. Closer, she tried to scream but all she heard was a faint whimpering coming from her throat. She tried to think once more, but she could only hear the loud thudding of her heart, like the crescendo of musical instruments at the finale of a recital. With weakened legs, she felt paralyzed as she imagined her worst nightmare. Like a caterpillar in a cocoon, she felt trapped. Ah, I'm telling you, listening to that, and guys, I can tell you, when I... Even though, yes, as Ime said, I would have worked with her on this book, but I had to read this book for myself. And I literally took a full morning, um, maybe about two hours, and just went through the entire book. But even as I as I read as I read your book, I could almost identify a teenager growing up. And we've had so many women on this on this set who have spoken about the whole matter of being abused and that mm -hmm. kind of thing as teenagers. I remember one young lady from I think from about age nine, mm -hmm. she was being molested by about three different men in her community. And, you know, your book almost gives us a front row seat into what is taking place behind the scenes for these women. Emotionally. What's happening in their heart. Emotionally. You know? what's, yeah, what's happening in their head. You know, how do they, how do they cope? But you, on the other hand, Yvette, I know you have worked with a number of these persons. And I want to talk, you know, just us talking a little bit about... What are some of the things that you're seeing, especially more young ladies, um, the homes from which they come, the ones that are being abused? What are some of the things that are contributing to these abuse? Okay, you know, one of the the thing that I I I am cons really concerned about. I spoke to a number of counselors, and I've heard social workers with it too. Is the whole um, with Corona, mm -hmm. with the children being at home? Mm -hmm for over six months now, going seven months. I really have some serious concerns. Yeah. Because statistically, not only locally, but internationally, mm -hmm. majority of the abuse is by someone the child knows. Yep. Either a family member mm -hmm. 
or a close family friend. And why it is so traumatic, even more traumatic than a stranger, you have to live uh, with this person. Yeah. And knowing what this person is doing to you, knowing that your mother knows or others know and they are not doing anything because the man may be the breadwinner and uh, they, this person or maybe the parent fear this person leaving them because emotionally they have their own issue and so you find that I, I'm concerned about that uh, what is happening to these children yeah. this perpetrator now have access to them 24 7 you know even one morning I tell you in the heights of you know COVID here in Jamaica I remember getting up one morning and I just felt the need to just be crying out for our children because I kept saying to myself, it's one thing that they are abused, but they get a chance to leave the home and go, go to school. school. Right. But here it is that these children now are locked in the house. And if it's like anything like my home, they're not even allowed to go outside. Mm -hmm. They can't go mingle. But yet they're locked in. And then remember that a number of us could not go to work. Mm -hmm. So you're in the house with these these persons, and these, as you said, perpetrators. And you might have a case where one parent gets to go out and leave the one. What happens if it's the abuser get to stay home? Thank you. Oh, my God. But if I have you ever gotten a chance to talk to like some of the parents or anyone along um, a parent per se who has they're familiar with what is happening to their child but has not done anything about it? Okay, um, yes. I had one parent who she her daughter the, the her daughter was being abused. Uh, she was raped from five oh, for two years until she was seven. And um that case affected me more mm -hmm. than you know some of the others that I dealt with yeah. because um, my girlfriend was a counselor also at the same agency as myself mm -hmm. she said that she couldn't deal with it yeah. so of course I got all the children with mm -hmm. all the abuse mm -hmm. and so on and uh, I really felt it for the little girl because I, I said I spoke to the mother the mother at first she said Life was so challenging for her. She was trying to make ends meet as a single mother. Mm -hmm. So she wasn't aware of what was happening. Mm -hmm. When the child came to her and made a statement, mm -hmm. and um, she said she ignored it because she was trying to prepare breakfast. She was trying to get him ready for school. Mm -hmm. But she heard the one a little older said, but tell her she not going to do nothing. So she said to her, why would you make a statement like that? Mm -hmm. And um, her reaction, honestly, I can understand her frustration. Mm -hmm. Um, the child felt like she was the one at fault. Mm. And so they couldn't get any more information out of her. So um, I worked with her, got quite a number of information for her. But what angered me, it was our justice system. Because they, it was an adult that committed a crime. Mm -hmm. And so, well, let me not say crime because I said he wasn't um, until the court says that, you know, he's guilty. But um, in the court, I went to court the day because I knew she would be nervous. It's a little baby. Yeah. And um, they said because it was an adult, it went to the adult court. Mm -hmm. And here I see the judge sitting on a seat like he's elevated. Mm -hmm. um, a policeman shouting, you know, the name and the, this authoritative name calling the poor little baby. Mm -hmm. And she was standing here and the perpetrator was there. And I was saying to the policeman, can I come into the, at least come to the courtroom with her? So at least she know that there's somebody there. No, I couldn't come in the court. And so the poor little baby, she held on to me and she was shaking so much, oh, you know, and I was saying, no, God, this cannot be right. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's not right for the baby. I was saying they should not have had the child going into the courtroom with this man. And then the matter was put off. So, so it's a case where the child had to go back to... to, to right, police. again. So it's like they were traumatized, re-traumatized. Re because you're actually standing beside this perpetrator who did this to you for so many years. I want to wrap up this part of it. Um, but if I, what do we... How do we... I don't, I, I, I don't know. It's a what or it's a how. How do we attend to cases like this? If, for instance, I know of a neighbor who's being abused, a neighbor's child that's being abused, or a neighbor that is abusing, or, you know, we come in contact. Because these are things that we are receiving so much in a society that it could literally be next door. How do we deal with such a thing? And from your counselor standpoint, how do we deal with such a thing? 
Okay, there are two points I wanted to address, two things that you said. One, um, persons are kind of hesitant about reporting. And I mean in these days with, um, we call it persons, where they say that you go on and um, give information about them, so reprisals, so persons are kind of fearful about that. And um, sometimes they say it's not my business. And, and so they, they um, leave it. But sometimes when it's staring them in their faces and they can't ignore it, and so you find most children will actually go to the teacher. Because uh, I say to persons, a child is at school with a teacher more than they are with their parents and others. And the child over time learns to trust if the teacher is an approachable person. Mm -hmm. So most of the times the children will come to the teacher and say, Miss, this is happening. Or some sometimes on programs on the television, you will see, come on, you can call an helpline and this will help. So sometimes the children call the helpline and so on. So you'll tend to find that some children will take the initiative mm -hmm. and so on. But most of them will go to their teachers because I've had more than one student come. Things that students have shared with me, their parents don't know. Sometimes when we see the situation is of such, we'll call the parent and say, can you come? Let us have a meeting. We will be there. So we are there with the child. So the, and then I would ask, because the child is your client. So I'll ask the child, I'm going to call your mommy because this situation, mommy needs to be involved. Or daddy, if it's a father that is there. Tell me, what do you want me? What part you want me to tell them? Because I cannot breach their confidence. So I'll ask them and they'll say, you can tell her this, you can tell her that. Or I said, I'm scared. I said, we will be here with you. So, you know, and so you, you do that. So, and another aspect of what you said about the neighbors. Um, unfortunately in Jamaica, and it is something that research has shown too, we have become um, complacent and um, persons, yes, and even in the home, what we find is as persons have accepted the abuse and um, they don't think about the child and the long-term impact. I spoke to one mother and she said, um, Miss, nothing wrong with her. You know, so she outside a play. It not affect her. And so I'm saying to her mother, look at the whole um, picture, what happened to the child. Miss, but you know, so she a play. Nothing wrong with her. And so they don't think about the psychological impact that this what the child trusted this person. The child is there with this perpetrator there. And many times, you know what the parents do? They have the children saying that is somebody attacked them one evening from school and raped them. Yes, because one child that spoke to her, she said, Miss, I'm going to tell you the truth. It's my stepfather. But my mother tell me to tell the police that I was going home from school and it was dark and I didn't see the person's face. But she says, my stepfather, she said, Miss, I'm talking because he got me pregnant and she had a baby. And she said, he's not going after my younger sister. And so he's not going to do to her what he did to me. And that's why sometimes the children themselves talk. Yeah. Because of her. And sometimes also the sad part of it is that sometimes it's all third generation molestation and abuse and rape. Yeah. Sometimes it's one person in the family going through three yeah. generations of women. And so these women keep silent and tell their children to keep silent too. Mm -hmm. So it, it's a serious issue that as a society and a nation, we have swept it under the carpet because we said there is no damage to the child. We don't think of the psychological and emotional impact. Hi guys, I thought I would share with you, for those of you looking for a Christmas gift or a New Year gift or a birthday gift um, for that woman, that strong woman in your life to offer the Uniquely Me Planner. Now what can you find in the Uniquely Me Planner? You can find pages to write for each month. You have pages to write your goals and we set it up so that those goals are smart, right? As you know, your goals need to be smart. So we have the specific, the measurable, the attainable, the relevant, and we put them in blocks so that you are able to fill them in accordingly. Also, you will find a daily 
a daily to-do list as well as for each day if you need to put your calendar what your calendar items will be you have that as well there is also a habit tracker guys or as well as a quote there is a list for you to put what are your list of priorities in terms of things to be done and of course guys i want to oh, we have pages and pages of that we give you blank pages as well so this is also it is your diary it's your planner it's your um your time management tool is what i would call it i want to encourage women who are creatives women who are executives out there as well you are trying to find a way to be productive here is your tool and so guys it's on amazon just put in uniquely me planner or you can put in simone stewart and grab a copy of my uniquely me planner guys remember uniquely me is uniquely you get your copy today So not so not the plan of where our interview was to go, but you know God is God is in, um, strategic with what He does. Um, I remember having I think it was um, I had a guest on set who three daughters of them, three sisters I should mm -hmm. say, and the father was actually molesting all three of them. And what we have found, we have a few who has gone into went into prostitution. There's one in particular she left from Kingston to Montego Bay trying to run from the situation but then of course normally their first inclination is usually to run but once they run they're not necessarily going to anywhere of safety so much safety and so much in terms of safety if you understand what i mean and so they're, they're turning to the next best thing which usually we find is prostitution um abuse and that kind of thing and it seems like it's a it's a it's a cycle our cycle that is just completely out of control but yet if, if these are some of the same women that come up and are resilient mm -hmm. and, and, and strong and, and, and stuff. What worries me is when it moves on from their generation to the next. Mm -hmm. And, you know, how do we fix something like that? What do we do? Woman to woman, how do we fix that? What do we do? It's a challenging question because, let me tell you. It bothers me because, you see, um, I have a daughter, you know, and I don't mean to put in, but I'm passionate about these things. And I know a few other women that's watching right now, mothers in particular watching, saying, thank God somebody is taking this bull by the horn. You know, how do we deal with this? Do we knock out these men? Um, will we go to prison if we knock them out, you know? That, that kind of thing. Which the truth is, the honest truth is, if I am to be made aware that somebody in my house have abused my daughter, I'm, I'm trusting that God will make it with somebody. You see, who I have mean, no formal attachment to. Because it might be harder for you to talk to them if it's somebody that you're attached to, you know. But if, I, I hope it's somebody you're not attached to and I get to knock them out. But, you know, next thing is I'm on TV. But how do we deal with that, Yvette? Okay, <laughs> one of the things, um, you have to let your daughter know your stand. Yes. Um, I went to a conference at UE with, um, oh, what's his name? Ah, the psychologist. He was at Bellevue, but he's retired now. Um, Professor Eklin, right, and Carrie Mensah, or yes, I went to his conference and it was on the same topic mm -hmm. of abuse. And they were looking at the, you know, effects on the brain, emotion, and so on. And, you know, you know as ladies, we meet together, we're all sharing. And um, when we were there discussing, you know, we all said to each other, if we looked at the definition no for molestation, maybe we'd say that most of us were molested as children. <laughs> Because um, there were persons who inappropriately touched you as a child, and you knew it. Yes. And and you would said um no. Yeah. You know, so I'm saying to her, at least most of us would have had at least one yes, experience one of yes. you know molestation, yes. and each person would say, well, my God, it's true, mm -hmm. you know, and um, so that is one. But the good thing about it, which is one of the things that um we are encouraged to do. As a parent, let your child know your stand. Yes, yes, yes. And so my mother always say to us, mm -hmm. anybody put them on for you for even your father, tell me we will kill him. <laughs> you know, so yes. parents always say that. So I knew my mother was not yes. for that. Mm -hmm. 
So when somebody came and he shook my hand, but I knew it was inappropriate and I, you know, looked and I went to her and told her and pointed at him and said, he did it. Yes. And my mother looked at him and said, you know, <laughs> prison, we're not going to go to prison today. But she said, it's a good thing. And that's what you did. Yes. You know, yes. what you did was right. So your child knows that yes. mommy will not cover for this person. Yes. My mother will not allow this person to continue with what they have done. They met um, once. But the child needs to know your stand. Yes, yes. And so a lot of mothers, the children don't know. And so when the person, the perpetrator, threatened the child and mm -hmm. said, listen, um, I will do this to your mother or what? My mother tell me, nobody can kill me. Mm -hmm. Nobody can do this to me. Mm -hmm. Anybody do it to you, come and tell me. I don't care who it is. You know what I always say, though? Here's, here's my thing, Yvette. I always say, because it's just a mind game, you know. Because I'm saying, the child, by the time the child come tell me, I would have gone to report it to the police or I told somebody else in authority and then go to that person before I head over there. So the time that them are going to try to kill me, everybody knows if me that them cause it. So they're playing tricks on the children's mind. But if we really look at it, we realize that, listen, they really can't kill me. But you, you stated it right. Allow children to know what our stance is. Um, I would also add in there, allow our children to know what is good touch and bad right. touch. Yes, that's what I was going to say right yes, they need to, know. to know what is good touch and bad touch and do not be afraid to well let me tell you what i do personally i say to my children that we don't keep secret because that's the first thing i notice they always want yes, to do well, well let's keep it a secret nobody needs to know and then for whatever reason this thing just this psychological thing just impact us that we keep it a secret mm -hmm. and then th because it's a secret they keep doing it they keep doing it. They keep coming to touch. They keep doing whatever and that kind of thing. But yes, yeah, so we, we're outlining some points, you know, for those mothers who are listening. And we have some, some teenagers and stuff and some children who's been tuning in to Uniquely Me. So let's see if we can, you think we can outline maybe about three steps, um, you know, if there's abuse going on. So the first thing is to, what, what you said was the first thing again? Let the child know your stand. Okay, so children, you need to be understanding what is your parents' stand. Parents, I'm going to add that as number two. You need to have a standard right don't be like that parent who say oh because the child out the door playing it doesn't mean um it means that they're not impacted children are one of those me don't know if it but i find that my you will slap my my slap my children and them come back to me for comfort but then simoya have a way to tell me um what you told me the other night um oh she said i'm not coming back into your bed until you apologize to me <laughs> so we need to have standards and don't believe that our children are not impacted. So let them know our stand and we need to know our standards. The next thing would be good touch and the bad touch. teaching our children what is the good touch and the bad touch. And then la um, fourth. Okay. One of the, the challenges, you see, we tend to tell our children, beware of strangers. Yes. How do you tell your child that the enemy in the home? <laughs> you know, that's a challenge. And so, as you say, we have to let them understand that, listen, don't let anyone touch you in your private area. Yes. And we also have to set a routine. Mm -hmm. It's either me, mommy, mm -hmm. that bathe you, yeah. or if you're not too sure about daddy, well. <laughs> but, <laughs> no, you have, and um, not only that, you know, but you have female mm -hmm. abusers too. Yes, yes. And so, it's really a crazy world we're in. <laughs> and so... But you have to really and truly know who you allow yes. to really be their children because you could really be giving permission to the abuser. Uh, so you need to make sure. It, it's sad, but really and truly, you have to. Because many times the enemy is in the home. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you've heard it here on Uniquely Me. Finally, um, um, a set of women talking out. Uh, um, not afraid to acknowledge that, hey, we have abusers all over and we need to be protecting our children. And we're saying, children, I'm giving you a little slang. Don't touch me there with a little attitude. Or not touch me there. Or we, we can come up with something. Not sure, Yvette. Sure. <laughs> but Yvette, thank you so much for coming on, on set and sharing this afternoon. Like I told you, you know, I felt like I could sit comfortably on the beach with you with a pina colada or some, something, you know. <laughs> virgin pina colada. <laughs> yes, the virgin one. And we just have a little chit chat and that kind of thing. Um, thank you so much again for sharing. And of course, um, if it, I mean, if there's somebody watching and 
their child is being abused or they know about it, can they reach out to you for counseling? <laughs> She's thinking about it, guys. Reach out to me. I will reach Yvette for you. But thank you so much again for um, for tuning in. And indeed, we want to be protecting our children every chance we get. And remember that it's not always about the strangers, but it's also sometimes in the homes. So take note of our four points. Um, allow your children to know what the standards are. You set a standard. Tell them we don't keep secret. And of course, don't touch me there. Thank you. See you next week. Who am I really? Choices, choices, choices. In pursuit of a career? OMG, I'm a wife. Help, I am a mother. Oh, I'm in church. When do I get to be a woman that God called me to be? Uniquely Me covers the acrobatic endeavors of every woman to balance the responsibilities of being a mother, a wife, a professional, a church leader, a friend, yet still maintain her identity. I too am a mother, a wife, a trained minister of religion, a banker, an entrepreneur trying to balance the many hats that signifies my role. My book will help motivate and empower every woman who is really unique in her own way. Grab your copy today on Amazon because Uniquely Me is Uniquely You. Thank you for tuning in to Uniquely Me with Simone Stewart. Remember, Uniquely Me is Uniquely You.